Today, let's talk about PC games with crazy good graphics. You know, like the ones that seem to come up in conversation the most when talking about flexing specs or trying to get your machine to run something. You guys know we just love talking about graphics here, and these are some modern, recent games that just look crazy good on PC. So let's get started off with number 10 and talk about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Without a doubt, the biggest, most insanely massive Assassin's Creed game also looks damn good on PC, uh, especially if you get it running ultra-wide, holy hell. Origins really kick things off with like Assassin's Creed games just looking out of this world, and Odyssey definitely pushes things to the limit with, like I said, a massive scale, but also down to a granular level, still tons of detail. Your character in particular looks incredibly detailed with, of course, a bunch of different modelings for different armor types because it's an RPG. Dust gets kicked up when you fight, characters get bloody, all of it's convincing combined with a really good lighting engine. And of course, it's worth pointing out the insane amount of variety. Tons of beautiful looking water, more tropical islands, tall mountains, fall trees with tons of foliage, even some snow. This game really has everything, and all of it looks really, really good. The higher the resolution, the bigger the screen, maybe HDR, mm -hmm, mm, chef's kiss. Now over at number 9, another one that you wouldn't think of at first, but The Division 2. Yes, this thing can really push some PCs, and for good reason. It looks incredible, uh, most notably the newest expansion, Warlords of New York, which takes things back to New York City, now to lower Manhattan, just really pushes things in terms of uh, the size and scale. Of course, the map is big, but also there's a lot of impressive verticality to it. Buildings truly look soaring. You get that sense of scale because the game can convincingly render those distances. Not only that, the streets of New York and Washington DC in the base game are littered with tons and tons of details. Uh, moving paper, trash into streets, wildlife, tons of foliage, weather effects, day and night effects, really great lighting. Even if you don't like The Division or Games as a Service game, well, we talk about the worlds that Massive builds all the time. They look incredibly good and are worth experiencing just on that alone. Especially if you can really crank this thing up to ultra, then it is damn impressive. Now next at number 8, if we're talking about games with the detail that's incredibly impressive, Metro Exodus. Yeah, man, look at this. Metro Exodus is impressive because, number one, it's it's the best looking Metro game by far, but it also brings things outdoors into much larger environments. And despite things opening up and, and embracing some kind of open level design, the game doesn't lose its identity and its detail in making just everything around you feel really convincing, like really feel like a ravaged wasteland. It shows in a variety too, like the desert levels look pretty good with some cool sandstorm effects, uh, but then there's also that like end of winter melting kind of muddy snowy areas. Then there's more wooded areas which is a first for the series, and, and of course, of course, the destroyed city landscapes covered in snow, kind of like an iconic look for the series, looks better than ever in this game. But, of course, when you're down in those tunnels, when you're doing those spooky things, the lighting system is really working overtime to make it look convincing and also spook you a little bit. This game is richly detailed to the point where, like, looking at it, just a screenshot of it, there's so much going on, and the fact that it all can run beautifully on a great PC makes it that much better. Now over at number 7, of course, we had to include a car game, so Forza Horizon 4. Uh, this is pretty much the most modern, best looking racing game. Uh, there's a lot of competition, but we just personally like the way this looks for the variety, the detail, the color, and also it's just straight up good fun too. Forza Horizon 4 also looks really great because it like kind of recreates an open world uh, English countryside for you to just drive around and explore through, and uh, there's incredible draw distances and tons of detailed little villages that all can go by at super high speeds, and when the game can keep up with it and when your machine can keep up with it, it's super impressive down to the reflection 
reflections on the cars themselves because of course they're the star of the show the way dirt and mud gets flung up and just the general variety of different vehicle types and environment types like snow and foliage and, and the change in time of day and the seasons there's so much work in overtime here to really impress your eyeballs like yeah it's looking great on consoles and it's definitely a showcase but uh on pc whoo now over at number six, we have Control, a game that we still think is underrated. It was our favorite game of last year, and for good reason. This third-person shooter is filled with tons of cool detail, artistic lighting, and great effects. Of course, this was an early showcase for RTX, which, when it is switched on, uh, the subtleties that it brings, the reflections in the floor, the way glass works, everything really just is turned up to 11. And even if you don't have an RTX capable machine, it's still mind blowing. Uh, the amount of effects and things that moves around as Jesse blasts through the environment, papers fly up in the air, debris smashes everywhere, things shatter, the ground cracks. All of that happening and running in real time above 60 frames per second is something that you truly need to experience. It's really impressive. Then of course, if you zoom in with photo mode down to a highly detailed level, you can see the detail on Jesse, her face, her clothing, the weapon she uses, even like reflections in her eyes and stuff. It is crazy and it's great. Now next over at number 5 we have Battlefield 5. We figured we'd talk about the most recent Battlefield game because they've always been uh, great showcases for graphicalness. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Uh, starting from like Battlefield, I'd say 3, every single one has really turned it up a notch and Battlefield 5 continues it with some really dense and rich looking environments, uh, the more urban environments with collapsed buildings, smoldering remains, sparks, uh, cloudy skies, looks damn good, not only on a good machine, but just like a really, really good monitor. Plus couple that with the added level of destruction that Battlefield 5 actually brings back to the series. And uh, wow, we've demonstrated it before, but just even like a shockwave of an explosion, shaking the snow off of a roof and seeing it realistically slide down, seeing wood splinter and shatter. Even if you were a Battlefield fan who wasn't the biggest fan of 5, you can't help but point out that all these graphics working over time with the destruction is really impressive. Uh, we hope that now they bring this over to a new Bad Company game, but that's just us. Moving on over to number four, if we're talking about a game that's the game that you really show what you can do, what you can push your machine to, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is still a great example. People love showing off this game in all of its glory. HUD turned off, settings cranked the hell up, maybe even a couple mods here and there. The Witcher 3, I also want to point out, like on PC, running well, still has one of the greatest video game sunsets I've ever seen. And now the game's a couple years old, and the fact that it hasn't been topped, I think says a lot about it. The environments are always filled with movement, deep vegetation lush stuff going on, people going by, wildlife. To have all of that going on at once and having the detail cranked up is just really, really nice to see. And uh, the game is a legend for a reason. And also, I know we're talking about PC graphics here, but the, the fact that they crammed that thing onto a Nintendo Switch, obviously it's super low resolution, but the fact that it remains kind of the same there, that's really cool. But again, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the PC version and hot damn. But next, down to number three, the most recent Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. This game looks absolutely incredible, specifically the single player, and I'll say specifically again, uh, the darker nighttime levels. If you're playing on a great monitor with some good deep black support, maybe you're playing on an OLED, this game absolutely shows its prowess. The lighting is just so convincing and unlike anything I've seen in a lot of other games and I wanted to point it out, not to mention coupling with the fact that the developers use tons of photogrammetry, which is essentially the technology of scanning real world items and placing them in a game, not just kind of like slapping them in copy and paste, like, like an old texture, but like legit putting it in the game. The developers went so far as to go to places like where the California wildfires affect and, and scan burned out cars and then put them in battlefields in the game. It goes a long way for just making all of the environments uh, wherever you are in the game from the streets of London to a war-torn area of the Middle East. Uh, all of it looks 
really, really astounding. And I think it's a combination of the lighting with the photogrammetry technology that really seals the deal. Uh, plus, characters also look incredibly realistic. Captain Price seems like a, a real man, like not like a cartoon mustache dude. That looks like a real dude that will be out there somewhere. And he is portrayed by an actor, so it makes sense. But yes, this game looks incredible, especially because it's got that regular Call of Duty refinement where it just runs as smooth as butter. If you got a machine and you can crank this thing up, it screams for real. Now down to number two, if we're talking about things screaming, Doom Eternal. Definitely more on the cartoonish side of graphics, but still you get tons and tons of effects going on on the weapon itself to the environments, to lasers, sparks, tons of great looking fire, explosions, enemy types that are all getting deteriorated in real time by your bullets, gore, blood, and of course sprawling looking levels with some pretty impressive draw distances all happening at once, all happening at high frame rates and high resolutions if you can get it shows how impressive this game really is because it's all going on at once and you the character are cruising through at a thousand miles per hour killing everything so it's really important that the game doesn't collapse under the weight of its own graphics and your high speed moving and the fact that it doesn't just makes it so so impressive especially considering they aren't going for photo realism here but yet it is still such a good graphical showcase down to the model of the Doom Slayer himself who looks absolutely insanely detailed. Doom Eternal is just a game you have to play on PC, not just for the mouse and keyboard, but for the graphics. Now down to number one, of course, you know we were going to mention it, Red Dead Redemption 2. I think the wait for this thing to come to PC was absolutely worth it, especially since it's been, once again, updated recently with even better textures. Uh, this thing is incredible. From the characters' details, the, the way their clothing moves as they move, to the way it gets dirty, to the way it gets wet, not only you, but your horse. And of course, the environment around you riddled with details, NPCs going about their day, carriages moving through the mud, or maybe even some busy streets, which, gotta say, Saint Denis is an incredibly ambitious and impressively designed city that just looks so realistic, especially if you catch it at night with a little fog to it. With these, When you see those street lights and those lamps through the fog, you can see that this game is really operating on a totally different wavelength. And of course the game world is so big and the fact that it has all this detail is so impressive. Go out into the desert, go out into the woods, which is riddled with tons of lush foliage and wildlife. See your character get hot and sweaty, see him almost freeze to death, see the horse's balls, which has definitely been a talking point for a while now. This thing looked absolutely insane on consoles, but now that it's finally on PC and you can really crank everything up and get a little extra detail and get a higher resolution and just get more detailed textures, it's just wild. It is absolutely the thing you should experience right now, especially now that the kinks are finally getting worked out. This thing is made for a kick-ass PC, and it's worth experiencing. Now, of course, might as well mention some bonus games. Of course, uh, Minecraft with ray tracing enabled. Not the most insane thing in the world, but it looks damn good, and it's a great way to kind of flex your RTX-capable card if you have one. Also, worth pointing out, we love to shout out the mod community, Grand Theft Auto V, with some realistic graphics mods is still a sight to behold. But of course, those are some PC games with great graphics that we wanted to mention. Uh, we'd love to know from you guys down in the comments. What are you thinking? What game?